Welcome to Live Your Passion. I'm your host, Alex Stephen from Life Transforming Treasures. On Live Your Passion, our guests share their stories and challenges and how they embraced and overcame them. Hopefully, you could get some wisdoms from their stories to help you on your journey. I'm an author, a speaker, and a life transformation coach. Please go to my website and download your free copy of Seven Keys to Your Dream Lifestyle at alexstephen.com. Today, I have a special guest with me, Kit Pang. Kit, thanks for coming and tell us a little bit about yourself. Great, thank you so much, Alex, just for having me. My name is Kit Pang and I am a speaker coach, a TEDx and keynote speaker and the founder of Boston Speaks. I am on a mission to help individuals and entrepreneurs become exceptional speakers and communicators because I always had a thought in my head when I was growing up. I always wanted to become a speaker. But something was holding me back. It was the fear of public speaking. Mm -hmm. It was my self-conscious belief that I have an accent, mm -hmm. uh, that I didn't know what to do. But today, I'm proudly happy and happy to say that I'm helping others and I love public speaking. Yeah, and that's yes. how we met um, at one of your workshops uh, yes. in Boston. So uh, again, thanks for coming. Um, and the name of the segment you wanted to use today is from introvert to extrovert. So that's an interesting story yes. because a lot of us, the fear keeps us back, me included. It, uh, you know, and we lose so much time. Like, you know, people say you squander the time, but it's all part of the learning and you have to take that leap sometime, which you did. So l let's talk a little bit about, you know, you came from Hong Kong, yes. one place I want to go. I've been to Singapore, but not Hong Kong yet. Um, tell us a little bit about your experience coming to the United States. The first thing, Alex, I said when I got here, my mom told me this, was I don't think I like it here. Mm -hmm. because it was, it got dark so quickly. Yeah. My skin color was different from everyone else's and I didn't know English that much. Right. So when I came here, I felt that I did not know how to belong. I, earlier I said I was shy and whenever I, I would have to speak up, even at, at a young age, I, I felt like my, my English wasn't mm -hmm. good enough. Right. I didn't know how to speak to others because everyone knows the community, mm. everyone has the culture, they're talking about the same cartoons. Yeah. I didn't know what they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. So you were in a different, a different place, have to make new friends and, you know, um, you look different to some of the people probably in your school and things like that. So yeah. culture shock. Yeah. Yeah. So you have an accent. I don't know if you notice. I have one. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I, I, I thought about that um, myself. I came out as an adult to go to university, mm -hmm. and um, but I used to get compliments on my accent. Mm. But I still thought, you know, if I had to speak, uh, will people understand me? But I've been in corporate America for so long. I never had a client, CEO or otherwise, who never understood what I was saying. So. You know, you just had to have that confidence and, um, you know, I remember Les Brown, mm. one of the questions I had for him, my speaker, coach and mentor and friend, and he did the forward in our book, Courage in Our Hearts. You know, I asked him, you know, what he thinks about my accent. I want to be a speaker, you know, I'm yeah. training. And yeah. He started to laugh at me. He said, you have a lovely accent. It's so soothing, mm. you know. I, I, um, you know, I wish you could talk to me before I go to sleep every night. You have such an eye. So y those sort of things encourage me. And, and how did that make you feel, actually, when he said Well, it made me felt, well, oh, I could do this. Yeah. You know, so things like that, you had to grab onto it. Um, because we ho all have our little inferior <laughs> of course. things. Of course. Yeah, so um, what were some of the other challenges you had in school and in the culture? How old were you when you came? When I came, I was six years old. Okay. And mm -hmm. the, actually the first school that I went to for a few years, everyone was African-American and Latinos. Okay. No Asians, yeah. no white people. I was the only Chinese oh, kid. So the only Chinese so you kid. you stood out. Yeah. So I stood out. Yeah. And actually people would sometimes make fun of me. You remember the Yankee Doodle? 
Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. what they would call me as, <laughs> as my nickname. Oh, because yeah. my first name is actually Yan. Yeah. Y A N. And yeah. my middle name is Kit. Okay. So they would always make fun of me by yeah. doing that. But, you know, eventually I would start making friends, but I would still feel hesitant if I were to speak in a, in a crowd. You know, mm -hmm. growing up, um, seventh yeah. grade, eighth grade, middle school, high school, I would not raise my hands. I would feel stupid when I would say certain things yeah. in front of a classroom. So that was always holding me holding back. back. Or yeah. the thought of, I have an accent, is holding yeah. me back. Or the thought of, I don't know what to say, is holding me back. It's all self-consciousness. Yeah, it's, it was tough for you. I didn't know it was that tough, being the only Asian. <laughs> you know, I thought you went to like Quincy, yeah. I, that school right in Chinatown, um, not having anyone like yourself. That's a big shock. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That's yeah. really, really big. Oh, and you come a long way. You have a sense of humor now. Somebody tell <laughs> you that, you just laugh yeah. at it. Yeah, so it, it's good. It's, it's good, um, you know. Um, so you had those challenges, your accent, you look different. Um, you know, you came from a different culture. Mm -hmm, you were mm -hmm. not born here. So those were challenges. So growing up, that's pr probably like elementary school following you through. And, and you made friends eventually, I assume. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's elementary school, middle school. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. it's, it's high school. Everyone has yeah. their own experience in right. high school. Yeah. So, but what really started to break me out of my shell mm -hmm. was that during one day, it was in high school, mm -hmm. we went to a cultural field trip to see cultural performances and mm -hmm. artwork. Yeah. And at the place, there was a hip hop and salsa group dancing. Right. Yeah. After their performance, I don't know what happened to me. <laughs> I went up to them. Yeah. I went up to them and I asked them, can I join their group? Mm -hmm. And they said to me, sure, why don't you come and audition uh, next week or next few weeks? And I went to the audition and somehow I got in. Yeah. I think they were looking for more people. That's why they're like, okay, yeah, go on, yeah. go on, go on. They again. need the numbers. So <laughs> I started learning how to dance with mm -hmm. other people, mm -hmm. just interacting. Mm -hmm. And I started, I met some good friends there and we started street performing right in downtown Boston. Mm -hmm. So Faneuil Hall, downtown yeah. Boston, Newberry Street. Oh. And that really broke out uh, my shell. Imagine a Chinese kid, yeah. you know, just, just yeah. dancing, yeah? yeah? You don't see much of that. Yeah. Yeah. So that really helped me just to be more outgoing. Right. A, a lot. Yeah. A lot. I mean, Fanway Hall, Newberry Street, that's the top spots in yeah. Boston. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I could, as, you know, I assume your confidence just started to shoot you know shoot up and um say, oh i could do this yeah um, i can do this look yeah. i'm dancing even though i, I was yeah. horrible at it <laughs> i, I sucked start, at it yep. yeah actually during my second first or second time street performing i i was practicing this move it's basically i grab my leg okay mm -hmm. so I, imagine this is my leg yeah okay so i grab my left foot for example yeah and what i want to do is i want to jump and push i want to put my foot over it at the same time and when I was doing this move, I was trying to jump and put my leg over it. So imagine my leg is here. What I want to do is I want to grab my hand, yeah. grab my foot, I mean, and I want to jump and put my foot over. So I, but when I was doing this on the streets, my foot didn't make it over. It <laughs> got stuck halfway and I landed <laughs> right on my foot. And yeah. that felt so embarrassing. Yeah. But after that, I said, I can only learn yeah. from that. Yeah, how can I be better? How yeah. can I entertain people yeah. more? How can I work on my skills? Yeah. So it's all a mindset. Yeah, it's all yes. a mindset. And you know, you, once you have that goal and you're persistent and you make that commitment, things happen. You yeah, know? Yeah. Like we were talking earlier, um, success is 80% showing up, you dear. Oh you yeah, know, Woody definitely. Woody Allen said that. And, and I believe that, you know, if you stay home and just feel sorry for yourself, you're not gonna yeah. make any movement, no progress. Yeah, so yeah. So it got you closer to your goal. So, w what was uh, I know you were teaching dancing, right? Yes, you, I, you I started to teach uh, hip hop dancing in studios mm -hmm. uh, and around different places. I even went to Lithuania mm -hmm. and France oh. to teach. Okay. And I've been in w one documentary, movie, uh, okay. some commercials. So I, I've made a lot of friends yeah. teaching. Yeah. And again, I, I always say that broke me out of my shell. Mm -hmm. It's because like you said, 80% is how you show up. Yeah. I'm not saying, I wanted to name the session introvert, from introvert to extrovert. It, yeah. Because it's not a bad thing being, being an introvert. It's not a 
good thing being an extrovert. It's neither good or bad. Yeah. I'm just saying it's a different kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. Because as an introvert, I would not go up to people and say hi. Mm -hmm. Now I would go up to networking events. Mm -hmm. I would not be shy doing things with my body. Mm -hmm. I I'm not that self-conscious anymore. Yeah, right. uh, but as an extrovert, I would take in all the thoughts and think in naturally. You see, extroverts are people who like to think out loud. Mm -hmm. I think I'm moving on to that path of sometimes I like to say things and oh, maybe it clicks when I'm talking mm -hmm. out loud. Extroverts, yeah. they like to take it in sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying, you know, either one of them is good have to be it. like yeah, this. Yeah. Uh, but it's just a different mindset. Yeah, and I think there's a balance. You got to yeah. know when to be silent and when mm -hmm. to speak up. And then, you know, everybody's born with a different personality. But it's good that you uh, realize that you yeah. need some sort of balance and you're seeing when you use some of the extrovert qualities, what it's bringing to your life. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that's a good awareness for you. For me, yeah. 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 So, you know, you had to be aware, you had to accept where you are, be aware. Mm -hmm. And then realize, what's your passion? You know, what it is. This is live your passion, of the course, show. Passion. Um, what, you know, what is your passion? And once you follow in your passion, I tell mm -hmm. my clients, my coaching clients, you know, some of them come to me and they say they want to do this, they want to set goals, they want to commit. I say to what? First of all, you have to know where you are. Be aware. You have to accept that. And then the change, you know, you have to find out what's your passion. What it is you're passionate about? What's your why? What's going to keep you going? Wake you up 2 a.m. in the morning with this drive. And once you're doing that and you're committed, when you get challenges and obstacles, you'll want to overcome it. You'll overcome them. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I see in your journey, yeah. more or less, because you found your passion, you wanted to do this, and your confidence grew as you, yes. you know, you practice yes. more and more. And it's great just hearing you say that because every single time we get together, we're sharing stories and I can see the passion in you. <laughs> so you, just you just want to help people yeah. and I love that. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. speaking about passion, so I love dancing. Mm -hmm. I, I've been dancing for uh, 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so I would dance and teach dance and mm -hmm. I would also work in dance administration. Okay. So the back end of a dance okay. studio, right. uh, how to run a dance studio, all the administrative work. Yeah. And since we're talking about passion, my passion in dance started being on the side. Right. I started having a new passion, which is speaking. Mm -hmm. Because at the beginning, beginning of the show, I said I'm a speaker coach and yeah. the founder of Boston Speaks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a dance instructor anymore right. because last year, I wanted to become a speaker. Mm -hmm. It was always in the back of my mind. Right. And I, because every single time I would see people on stage, I would say to myself, how are they doing that? Yeah. How are they on stage? How are they speaking? Now, at the same time, I, I, kn I knew I wasn't the best at speaking, mm -hmm. but that was something that I always wanted to do. And at the last year of my college, I entered this public speaking competition just because I wanted to practice on the scale and there was a, a prize of $2,000. Oh, yeah, that's well, course, motivation. Yeah, that's motivation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I practiced really hard. I s it was in the church. So I practiced okay. from maybe 10 a.m. to uh, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Just practicing, practicing, practicing. Yeah. I would be th in there by myself, just pr enunciating, Presented. practicing yeah. over and over again. Yeah. Mm. During the day of the competition, I felt like I was able to be myself, mm -hmm. to share my emotions, just to be able to do this on stage. Let yeah. my arms go, let my emotions go, just yeah. give it out there. And it was that feeling that hooked me in with public speaking mm -hmm. and this communication. Right. It's like being surrounded by a good group of people. You know, when you're surrounded in a good community, you have that mindset. Right. That was the same thing that I felt when I was speaking. That gave me a new mindset, that gave me a new feeling, mm -hmm. and I wanted to pursue something with that in my future. Yeah, yes. so wh what I'm here saying is like, even with the dancing, it was something, you know, you got into it, yeah. and you, w you were not like a natural, so to speak. No, no. Right, you didn't hit the ground running, but you were persistent. And you keep, and this is what I want people to, mm -hmm. you know, to realize, to hear, is that, you know, being persistent when you want to do something, it doesn't always come off the first time. It takes several yes. tries, and 
you know, someone said, the more no's you get, get you closer to your yes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I hear you saying. How you did it is the persistence, is the practice, is the showing up in your dancing. That's right. Yeah. And then in the speaking, it's showing up again. You, you, you know, what most people wouldn't do is like 10 to 2, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Who's doing that? Yeah. The person who wants to win. I mean, the $2,000 yeah. is great, <laughs> but it... It, it propel you into a different career, so to speak. You know, your own business. Um, so that, that was good, good incentive, you know, for you. And um, so tell us a little bit some of your, your experience in this journey in speaking, public speaking, and you know, what are you doing now? Mm -hmm. And uh, well, first I do want to say I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Because I like to ask people, do you think you can master your skills, mm -hmm. even though you're not a you're not born with that gift. Right. And because that's what I believe. Because uh, as you said, dancing was not the most natural thing to me. Speaking was not the most natural thing to me. It's not something that we get up to do in the morning and say, hey, look, I'm gonna dance. <coughs> I'm gonna speak in front of a group of people. And what it is is you have to, if you want to master a, that skill, you have to hone in on that and practice and practice and practice. Right. That's why I believe that anyone can be great and yeah. exceptional anything that they want to do. Yeah, and w you know, we all born with greatness in us. I, I, I really believe that. We all do, but some people go out and develop it and some just have it, you know, dormant. But we all have different skills. Mm -hmm. We all different, you know. We all have different accents. Hong Kong, Trinidad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, and, uh, but that, that's how it is. And once you accept that, you know, you're pursuing your goals. Yeah. And, um, so you, you got into speaking, what were some of your early experiences sure. and challenges and how you overcame them? Share it with the audience. So their, their challenges may not be in speaking, mm -hmm, but it's something, mm -hmm. some fear they have that they could I'm going to say this. Some of you might want to quit your job right now. Some. Mm -hmm. And this is it, the position that I was in. I was working full time at a dance studio and I was teaching hip hop at night. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm at this point, I want to create a freedom business. I want to start a business for myself. What can I do? One, I knew that I wanted to get paid to speak. Two, is that I just want to become a speaker and get out there more. So that's what I, I did. I started hosting workshops. I would post educational events about public speaking on Meetup and Eventbrite. And I would teach, for example, public speaking for entrepreneurs. I would post it on Meetup, I would post it on Eventbrite, I would share it on social media and try to get as many people to come. I started hosting one, people loved it. I started hosting two, people wanted more. So I started hosting events, maybe one or two a week. Since January of 2016, I'm proud to say that I've hosted at least 80 workshops wow. on communication, yeah. just teaching that skill. Mm -hmm. And from hosting that, people saw more of me. People kept on coming back from meetup to meetup to meetup. Yeah. There are some people that, I, I, I hate to say this, I don't even know their names. But <laughs> I, know <laughs> yeah, I see them all the time. Yeah. I know yeah. their faces, but yeah. I don't know their names. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the other big problems that I had was how am I going to make money out of this? Mm -hmm. I saw that a lot of people needed the skill of public speaking. Now, the next thing was I need to offer. If, if I have this great service, I can teach people how to speak, or if you have a great service, people might be looking for that. Because have you ever heard of the saying, if you are a fifth grader, you will be an expert to the third grader. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my limiting beliefs too. Mm -hmm. I thought that I have to be this big guru, yeah. this public speaking guy, yeah. to be able to teach a lot of people. But a lot of people don't research that skill, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And if I've been hosting all these workshops and if people love it, why can't I teach public speaking? Mm -hmm. So I started charging for my four week courses. So right now I'm teaching courses on how to master public speaking, mm -hmm. the technical side of speaking, mm -hmm. and also how to get paid and booked to speak mm -hmm. because that was one of the journeys that I wanted to take too. And I'm happy to say that I given a talk on TEDx Mm -hmm. I've, I've been invited to speak at Inbound, mm -hmm. which is a, a big marketing yeah. conference. Uh, last week, I spoke at the CIO Summit, 
uh, chief information officers. <laughs> so there were all these technical leaders, yeah, yeah. and I was teaching them public speaking skills. Wow. And they loved it. Yeah. They loved it. Yeah. yeah. So that's good. So now you're at a point where you're giving back. Give I, back. Hear you, I know yes. you give free workshops, you're charging for yes. some, but you started giving back and trying to help people who were in the same position that yeah. you were in. So, you know, that, that's, a great, that's a great thing. Um, and that's how you get the exposure. Yes. Um, not everyone could charge yeah. from the beginning. You had to yeah. um, have this following and people see what, you, what value you bring into them. And, and, and that's a great thing. So you have any, um, with the people that you train in so far, you have any success stories of people who broke out of the shell, so to speak? I would say yes. Mm. I have trained many people from neurologists, mm. scientists, mm -hmm. to life coaches, mm -hmm. and to uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, there's this one woman named Rita, who is my good friend now. She, she's also Asian and she felt that her accent was holding her back and she felt that public speaking is not one of her thing. Mm -hmm. Now, after my courses, she's a little bit more confident. She feels when she's speaking in front of others. Yeah. She's the owner of Boston Bonbon. Bon. She, mm -hmm. uh, she makes macarons. Yeah. And she just recently got accepted to speak at the Massachusetts Conference for Women. Oh, nice. Before, she didn't know what to do. <laughs> she didn't know what to now do. Now she's teaching yeah. others. Yeah. In a big conference. Yeah, so yes. And good. also, speaking about that conference, uh, people come to me now. She is an author of uh, a, a popular book, uh, Flawed. Mm -hmm. She's also speaking at the Massachusetts Conference for Women last year. And she came to me and said, Kit, can you help me on my keynote speech at the conference? And I said, of course, yes, I can yeah. help you. Yeah. So I love to help people now and see mm -hmm. how they can grow. Mm -hmm. Even though they might know what they're doing, it's yeah. always good to have someone else take a look at your life, exactly. take a look at your process. Yeah. And yeah. that's one thing that you, you do great too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because when you, you know, when you're in the, the frame, so to speak, you can't see the picture. So you always want this outside opinion, yeah. um, somebody you could trust and somebody who has the expertise. And you know, that's, that's very important. Always get you know, somebody else, you might think it's great and they might see something and like, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, so yeah, that, yeah. So that's great. So you, so you came from Hong Kong to mm -hmm. being the only Asian in school. I didn't know it was that severe. Yeah. Um, it wasn't that severe, maybe yeah, I'm but, <laughs> but I was I mean, the only Asian. No, I mean, yeah. I mean that's severe. I mean, um, just coming from, I mean, Hong Kong, it's primarily yeah, Asian. Yeah. And you come into a new country, a different climate, you know, I'm sure you didn't have a lot of extended family here and friends like you all had in Hong Kong. And it, it's all a culture shock. Mm -hmm. We went through that too. Um, it, it wasn't that severe because there were a few people from Trinidad in our school and people from the Caribbean. Yeah. So we sort of assimilated, but um, it, it is, but once you have your eye on the goal, mm. it, it's all secondary. I mean, you were young, six years, so it took some time. But where you are now, that's, you know, that's what people are looking at is in terms of your stories, the challenges you went through. You, know, you did things on your own. I didn't hear you talk about having specific mentors, so to speak. I know and that, that's something I recommend, mentors, coaches, but, but you looked you, s you went on secret. No, I have a lot of mentors okay. who I call my friends. Right. I think mentors are great because they have skills that you don't have, right. or they may have skills that you already have. Yeah. But what I find great in my friends or my mentors is that they give me a kick in the butt. Yeah. Look, we have all the information we need on Google. Mm -hmm. We have all the steps we need on YouTube. Yeah. Sometimes we just don't do don't it because do we're it. on yeah. Facebook all of yeah. the time. Yeah. But you need a mentor to say, hey, get off your butt. Yeah. Do this or just to give you the next step, right. or just to give you inspiration. That's what I think really. And, and the thing with the mentor yeah. um, is that they hold you <coughs> accountable. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we need. We get sidetracked. There's so many things going on and you get sidetracked and you don't come back. And that's the thing, if you're talking to someone on a consistent yeah. basis, <coughs> they keep you on track. And, you know, mentors, it could be a paid mentor, like Kit said, it yeah. could be a friend. Um, you know, growing up, I didn't know the word mentor, but I was never afraid to go and ask people for help. And I realized when you ask people for help, they're always willing to help you. 
There's no one you're going to go to and ask for advice and they're going to say no. I used to go, and I got out for my mom. She's like, why yeah, you don't yeah, go and yeah. ask this? In the village we yeah. grew up, and I'll say, what about this when you pass here? Exa you know, from a young age, I can remember 10, I wanted to go to university. And it took me some time. You know, I got married, had two kids. Yeah, yeah. My wife and I came to university in the United States. But that dream, that goal mm. never left me. Mm. You know, although things didn't happen, the textbook way I, s I say, you know, like you go from high school to, to university college. That didn't happen in our case. We worked for a few years, started a family, and then wow. we came to the United States. So it doesn't have to be like everybody else. Once you have that goal yeah. and, and that commitment, you know, you, you could achieve it. Everything doesn't happen the same timeline for everybody. No. So no. people had to realize that. Don't be hard on yourself. Yeah. Don't get frustrated. Just pick up the pieces. Like Kit said, talk to your friends, trusted yeah. friends, people who know more than you. Like he used a good analogy, fifth grade could teach third grade. And that's one of the things yeah. I had to talk okay. about my <laughs> granddaughter in Montessori school. I love it. She's in what they call lower L. So they have um, first, second, and third grade. So she's like a senior. She's third grade. And they work and interact with the first graders and second mm. graders. And they did that for her when she was in first grade. And, you know, we had to take that concept and use it in our daily lives mm -hmm. and businesses. Mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think, Alex, everyone has their own journey. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share with you one great tidbit that my mentor shared with mm -hmm. me. He asked me, why do people fail? Mm -hmm. Why do people fail? And he gave me four reasons. One, why do people fail is because they have no consistency. Mm -hmm. For example, if you want to learn how to play the guitar, mm -hmm. you cannot just play it once a week mm -hmm. or, I, I mean, once a month. You have to play it on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. probably, right? Mm -hmm. So you need consistency. A second reason why people fail is because they have no system. If you have the gu guitar, but if you don't have the YouTube channel on how to teach you how to play the guitar, mm -hmm. you don't have a book on how to play mm -hmm. the guitar, mm -hmm. you c can learn it, but it's probably going to take you a long, long More time. time. Yeah. Yes. And another reason why people fail is because they have no accountability. We have the guitar, we have the system, we have the book, we might play it one week, we might play it two weeks. But then life happens, yeah. and then we don't come Drop back to off. it six months later. Yeah. So what accountability can you build in? Maybe it's a friend. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, going on Facebook group, having the same group of community. Yeah. Yeah. And the last re reason why people fail, we talked about this, is because people don't have mentors. Mm -hmm. Mentors have done it before. They have that expertise. Yeah. They can give you that kick in the butt. Yeah. They can show you the way. Yeah. So if you surround yourself with consistency, mm -hmm. accountability, have a system, have mm -hmm. a mentor, mm -hmm. can you fail? Yeah. It's going to be, uh, you still can, but it's going to be less hard to. Yeah, yeah less yes. hard. And I, I stress this, I, I yeah. guess every show is you have to have mentors. Yes. You know, if you, if you could afford it, get a coach, somebody to hold your hand, somebody to ask you the right questions. It's a great investment. Um, you know, not, not just the, the course you got to look at, but the value, the return, yeah. the change in your life, you know, uh, that's going to be a, a total, mm -hmm. total change in the trajectory of your life once you get the right coach, right mentor, and just keep it going. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, that official. Like you said, it could be friends, people who, yeah. who uh, traveled that path before. In that journey, and they could yeah, tell yeah. you. So yeah, you know. So great. so here you talking about where you came from and all the things you went through, what you achieved, where you are now. It, it's a pretty great, great story. Um, anything else you want to leave with the audience? Anything? I want to leave with the audience. Uh, what I find special is public speaking, mm -hmm. and I always like to give examples. Here's what Warren Buffett said when he was mm -hmm. interviewed mm -hmm. on what's one skill that people should master, and he said public speaking. And he said public speaking because public speaking is one of those skills that you do not need a 200 IQ to learn. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that you should master because for leaders, for everyday average people, it's a skill that you need to connect with others. Mm -hmm. It's a skill that will teach you how to organize your thoughts in your mind, 
it's a skill that will teach you how to be more relatable to mm -hmm. the audience mm -hmm. and it's a skill that will teach you about body language right. and just eye contact right. and it's a skill that you just need as necessary as an asset mm -hmm. in your life because we live with other people yeah yes so that's that's great and warren buffett warren, you know he successful knows guy he knows what <laughs> he's talking guy. about yeah. yeah i like him very humble guy yes um so you know great thanks a lot for coming and you know gracing us with your presence and your story and um how could people get in contact with you sure thanks yeah. alex if you would like to get in touch with me or learn more about public speaking you can go on our website at boston speaks that's Boston, and then S-P-E-A-K-S dot com. Or you can feel free to email me at kit at bostonspeaks.com. We host a lot of free workshops in Boston, from public speaking to how to sell, to uh, funny events like improv classes too. So if you want to get in touch, just go on the website. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, yeah. So thanks a lot, really appreciate yeah. it. So what, what I like to do, um, on my shows is, you know, give a copy of my book to my yeah. guests. And Great. this is my book, Courage in Our Hearts, A Family's Love Story. The, the um, forward is by Les Brown. And um, this is your personal autograph Great. copy. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're you so welcome. Much. Yeah, you're welcome. Look at that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wh what I do on my shows too, uh, I like to pick the, the quote of the day. Mm. Um, if I could find today's date. And um, uh, for my book, Inspirational Life Quotes, a uh, collection for your daily motivation. So there's a quote here for every day. And today's quote is, I submit to you that if a man hasn't discovered something he will die for, mm. he isn't fit to live. Martin Luther King Jr. I think you discovered what you want to live for. Yeah, that's a great quote. <laughs> yeah, that's great for today. Quote. Matches. Yeah. yeah, and and um, you know, Jim will tell you. We talk about this on the last show. Uh, I I read the quotes. I don't know the quote. I don't look at the quote before, and it's <laughs> always relevant to the topic. I don't know how this happens. It's always relevant to the topic. So um, I have a couple other books. They all on Amazon. This one is. Um, IP goals made easy for mm. parents and teachers who deal with IP. Um, and the other book we have, which is an accompaniment, a, a study guide to Courage in Our Hearts, it's Discover Your Inner Treasure. And my granddaughter on board of these. <laughs> mm. And I have to say, Alex, thank, yeah. you, know, thank you just for, just for writing these books. Yeah. Because I think once you get, it's that mindset again. Once yeah. you surround with good content, good books, just yeah. like these. Yeah you want to grow even yeah, more. Yeah, you you become more successful more. with yeah. your personal life, family, yeah. business life. So just yeah. thank you, keeping us yeah. inspired. With, yeah. With <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah. so um, again, if you want to reach me, uh, my website, I have free resources at alexsteven.com and my email is info at alexsteven.com. Thanks a lot for tuning in to Live Your Passion and see you next time. Seating was a production of Medfield TV Community Shows.